John, what in the hell do you have there? A brownie. A brownie? A brownie. <laughs> Uh, hi, Internet. Uh, it's me again, making videos, lo and behold. And I'm here with my good buddy, John. And today we are going to discuss the, what is it, the Kodak Brownie 620, right? Yeah, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Flash 620. The Flash 620. Flash. So, <laughs> yeah, don't, give away, don't give away all our secrets <laughs> just yet, John. Uh, so, do you want to tell me really quickly um, what this is and when it's from and how long you've had it? Uh, I think the camera itself is from, like, the 50s. Um... I'm not 100% sure. I know I got it uh, from an ex-girlfriend. Thought I liked cameras. I, I do, but I, as you know, I don't really shoot a lot of film. Uh, gave it to me, and it is literally sat on a shelf. I thought it was really cool, so I set it up uh, to hold some books up for like 12 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does look really cool. I, I actually did some research on it. Um, these things sell for about 15 bucks on eBay, generally. <laughs> so, you know, like... Uh, you know, whatever. I think yeah. because this was the equivalent of like a point and shoot camera at the yeah. time, this is very, very limited. They say uh, limitations breed creativity. So yeah. hopefully we're going to be extremely creative with this <laughs> when we take pictures. It has a whole it. two two settings, I think. Two right. settings, yeah, and two aperture settings. Um, but this was made between the uh, the mid 40s and the early 50s. So it's, it's most likely from the late 40s. Um, like it was kind of a golden age, uh, at least to me in American uh, camera making. That's when my my um, Argo Flex is from. That's when my Graflex uh, Crown Graphic is from. Um, and there's a lot of similarities. I I looked at this online. You have exactly one choice of aperture, or maybe two. But um, generally, your aperture is going to be set somewhere between f13 and f16. It's not entirely clear. Um, this uses a, a normal lens. It's medium format, so I think it's like a 90 millimeter, which is going to correspond to like a wide normal, which is pretty standard for cameras from that time. Um, and it has one shutter speed, uh, which is going to be about 1 45th of a second. So I would imagine that sharp images are, are probably not... Uh, in the in the making with this. Now this is a satellite dish. This is Wi-Fi yeah. right here, so you can uh, <laughs> upload photos to your Flickr. Is that correct? Yeah, very very early Wi-Fi. <laughs> <No>. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, that's the flash, right? Yeah, and that would you would actually put a flash bulb in there that would pop. Is that? Yeah, I think I think it had to pop out. I don't think that you could replace it. So because this actually screws in and out. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got um, an early uh, like 1970s Kodak. 110 camera um, that uses 110 film that actually um, has a rotating flash bulb that pops as you go, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to do today is um, we're going to load this thing with some film, and this uses 620 film. It doesn't use 120. Um, you have two options. You know, if you just try to put the 120 in, it's going to tear because 620 doesn't have backing paper on it the way 120 does. But um, alternatively, you can roll your 620 film or your 120 film rather onto a 620 spool and just load it right in there. Uh, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. I'm not, there's no way I, I just, I'm ever gonna do that. Uh, but turns out B&H sells it. <laughs> so who knew? So uh, apparently there's some company out there, uh, most likely just a couple of dudes uh, or ladies, you know, whomever, who take 120 from Kodak, re-roll it onto 620 spools and sell it for a slightly marked up price. Substantially marked, about you know, twice the price. Uh, these were like 15 each. Yeah, I don't know how much the other cost. Yeah, like seven, six bucks. So, so that makes sense. But um, we are going to uh, to try and load this thing up with some Triax 400 and take it out and shoot while we still got some sunlight. Uh, I chose Triax. John ordered it, but I chose Triax because the look I think will match the the camera because we're not going to get yeah. pristine <laughs> images probably out of this. So it, you know the Triax has that kind of gritty, cool look to it, and because this has one setting. Uh, Triax is very forgiving, so it'll allow me to go and develop it and probably save the images, which are going to be some combination of over and underexposed, regardless of what we do. So we're not even going to bring a meter, because hey, <laughs> we're just going to go and take some pictures with it and see, and see how they turn out. So are you ready, John? Yeah, I'm all set. Let's do this thing. You can how bad can you be with that dog? It's a cute dog too. All right, so here we are, and John, there was some advice in the manual for this on how to expose it in an overcast day. <laughs> yeah, there's a, uh, a bulb setting, so they said just put it on a tripod and just hold the button down for, and they gave it an amount of time, keep your but hand I don't. <laughs> very steady. So I don't think it's really useful. <laughs> we've got this guy ready to go. You know what's, what's gonna be useful though is because um, when this camera was designed, 
film was gonna be like 25 ISO, 50 ISO or ASA, whatever. Um, we've got 400 speed in there. So it's gonna be a lot easier given that it's not super sunny okay. today. It's nice out, but you'd rather overexpose Tri-X than underexpose it anyway. So uh, we're here in lovely Delaware Park in uh, uh, Buffalo, New York. Um, we're representing all over the place today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, we've got the brownie and we're gonna take pictures. You want me to take the first one or you, maybe you wanna christen oh, it? <laughs> So what do you think? What do you think I should take a picture of? What do you say the, uh, and I should just have it, I don't want it in bulb. You don't have it in bulb, and then you want it to, I don't know, you want to take my picture, John? Yeah, I can take your there, picture. There, I'm five to ten, five feet, to ten away. feet away. All right. Am I five feet away? You look good. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> and it's <laughs> done! It takes like a, <laughs> oh, that was a, uh... Just, Your picture might be very blurry. Let's I, go to number two. <laughs> I mean, depressing the button takes a bit more force. Than yeah, you expect. You told <laughs> I was me. I was playing with it. I'm like, there's no way that we're gonna get sharp pictures out of this. All right, John, you uh, ready? Yeah, all right. Might as well. Do I look good? This is a good. Yeah, it's a super good look, John. Oh my god. Yeah, I, especially because it also tips down because you're right in the front. All that weight. Oh my god. So, I don't know if that's. Uh, We'll see. Oops, and I just advanced it a little too far that time, so we'll see here. Let's move on down. Yeah. You want to take it? Yeah, I'll take that, yeah. So, we'll walk down to, like, near the Skajakwoda. Look at this. This is cool. Should we be turning this? Yeah, let me just, let me just take mm -hmm. one here. This is that first one. These are all gonna be, I have a feeling these are gonna just be a disaster. But. <laughs> okay, Kodak and number one. Get an arm workout doing this, man. Yeah, right? Oh, it's locked. Yeah, sorry. It's all right. All right. <laughs> we'll see what that looks like. All right, let's move. Let's let these folks go past us. And then... Hey guys, can I take your picture with this? Yeah, sure. Is that cool? Okay. I think we gotta move right into the sunlight because this thing does not function <laughs> well in the shadows. It's a Kodak Brownie from the 40s and I'm trying to oh, that's awesome. take pictures with it. We'll see what they look like. It's right in the sun because this thing like, it also... it, it's got a lens from the 40s so it's not gonna be. All right guys. How should we post right. it? However you want, it doesn't really matter. Which <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. You're welcome. Awesome. Where did you find film for that, by the way? It uses 120 film, and you have to re-spool it. It's, it's, it's 620 film is the film that it uses. They don't make that anymore, but you can buy 120 and re-spool it onto a 620 spool. It's probably more of an answer than <laughs> you wanted, but... but it uses yeah. old, non-existent film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. All right, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah, great. They're really cool. I love Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'm way too close. That's what we're getting. Whether you're in focus or not, I don't know. Oh, God. It moves so much. Let me try one. Here, go stand in front of me. All right, let me try. Oh, right about being a little closer. Let's find out. And roll. I, you I didn't roll it? it. No, you can do it. double exposure really easily with this. If you wanted, to. But, uh, yeah, I, forgot, I should have done that beforehand. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think this works. Good. Beyond ten feet, John. Oh, was I at the wrong? Shit. I'm gonna move a little closer. Am I might be on ten? Yeah. like American sniper. You gotta take a deep breath and... I'm pissed off. Yeah, I didn't think about that. It's a cool park. It's a cool park. You know, uh, let's walk around this way and then down to the stone bridge. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, but I don't know how to get there. It's around. It's this way. Okay, cool. So, are we gonna see here? This is gonna be the last of them, probably, right? Or, what do we got? Like oh yeah, we got four more, right? Because yeah. this is one. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm worried there's going to be two dark shape pictures out there. Yeah, but we'll see. I mean, we'll find out. I always want to try one on the bulb setting and just like hold down, see what happens. You want to try? Kind of do, but like I don't know. What, I don't know how long to hold it. Oh, I mean, not long. Like one Mississippi. And just... Yeah, I mean that's like half a second. That's long. Um... Oh my god. Which is hilarious because you said the pictures are going to be uh, six by. Uh... No, they can't be six. They're going to be. Uh, what you say? Six by nine. Six by nine. Hold it down here. You know you're the you're the expert. I don't. I'm not the expert, but that seems to be the way to do it best. See, I feel like you want more weight on the bottom to counterbalance the camera, which is what. However, oh god, I think you're trying to keep the shake away from it, distance it. But you might be right. I mean, I don't know. Hold it however you think is best, buddy. That seems you want to hold it higher. Hold it higher. Higher. Oh. <laughs> All right. Nope. All right, John. A successful adventure, I think. Probably have a lot more. Viewers. Yeah, yeah. Let's wait for this young lady to pass, and then we can do this here. What are we doing? Is this a wrap up here? This is a wrap up, John. All right. We'll pretend that we've taken all the pictures with this guy. So, uh, what, what? This is before we the see magic of the movie man. Yeah, we haven't seen any of these photos yet. What do you, what do you think they're gonna look like? Uh, <laughs> blurry. I think they'll be. I think they'll be better than you think. I actually do think because I don't. I don't. See, I want to watch it when it opens. I think it doesn't open the whole time you're pressing down. Sure. You know saying so, I think that it will be better than I'm thinking. Here comes a guy with big dogs. I'm not sure it's going to be. As I, good I thought that this was going to be secluded, but it was in fact right in the middle of everybody. Apparently. Yeah. Um, yeah so um, I'm hoping. Uh, we, I think when we're done, we'll have 16 potential photographs. Yeah. <laughs> 16 possible photos. Look at these cute dogs behind me. I do think it's going to be better than you think. Look at those cute dogs. This is always super cute. The guy who owns it's a weird guy. I feel like I'm cutting off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the dogs. I'll leave that in. Yeah. Um, uh, take out that thing. It's still another weird owner in his jorts, though. Um, who is Tiamo? Tiamo means uh, my um, love. Yeah. Is that what it means? You? No, Tiamo is you. T. Anyway, oh. uh, so we're going to preserve the rest of this. So, um, yeah, that's the Kodak Brownie uh, Flash 620, made in the USA. Get one on eBay for $15. Would you get one? I would already you? have one, so I, <laughs> I, would, I would not get another. If you didn't have one, would you buy one to use as your regular camera? I would probably not as this my guy's regular running. camera. I mean, it's more interesting. We got some people commenting on it and asking about it, which is kind of much cooler than my point and shoot I use. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah. If I went to a concert and took pictures of that, though, I think my results would be less than stellar. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's basically just a big box with a lens on it, with some film stretched over the back, and, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's what it is, and it takes pictures, and I'm going to go develop them tomorrow, and we will see. I think the biggest challenge is going to be the exposure with a lot of them. They're all going to be some degree of over and underexposed. There's not going to be any, I would imagine, Ideal. that are going to be, like, nail on the head, yeah. you know, exposures. Any last thoughts, John? It was fun. It's always fun to try something new. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I think we're going to have to... I know that the uh, the antique mall out by Jeff, he sent me pictures. We've got a bunch of old Kodak TLRs and stuff. Like I mean, 10, if 10 the, bucks. If the pictures came out, I think it, for 15 bucks and like 14 bucks a film, I think it would be worth just to one up, just to pick it up and, and fool around with it. Yeah, and it's what's neat about this, I think, is it's a really big... Like a, like a piece of photographic history. Yeah. You're looking at something that... This was like the the people's camera, you know. Uh, with, uh, this was like uh, the point and shoot for people who weren't photographers. You didn't have a ton of money to go buy something, so kids, you know, younger people um, who just wanted to be able to take pictures back in the 40s and 50s. This would have been the kind of thing you would have gotten because this was this was affordable even then. Yeah. So um, yeah, pretty cool. Kodak Flash 620. Have yourselves a great day. Say goodbye, John. Adios. All right, have a good one, guys.